Hello everybody! Welcome to another Sunday fun day over the stuff I watched over the well my trip. Pretty much of October. And yes, this is this is gonna come out probably before the foreigner and another film. I will leave it as a bit of a surprise. But I wanted to get to this so that way I can let y'all know what I'm going to see throughout November. So that way it's not as much up in the air. In fact, this everything should be returning back to normal. Well, it's normal things get around here. And I will get reviews out fairly quickly, fairly efficiently, as quickly as they do come with me. And I meant to tack this in at the end of Jigsaw, just I will admit I just straight forgot. Because <laughs> I meant to put the end of the month. So instead, I'm going to put it on Geostorm, which is what I'm talking about here, which is a Gerard Butler film, which came out in October, which this movie really seemed like it was going to be a disaster film, like anything else. Named Geostorm, it even sounds like a straight-up, like, cheaply made disaster film that you'd watch on sci-fi or anything like that. But you know what? I was actually somewhat intrigued by this, because like, Okay, this looks like they're just trying to have fun with this premise. Maybe they'll just do that. They'll just have fun. And that's what I was really hoping for. I was hoping for a dumb, eh, totally idiotic, you know, mindless, turn my, move, turn my movie off. Turn my brain off, watch the movie, and I can genuinely kind of enjoy it. Yeah, sort of like Day After Tomorrow, though Day After Tomorrow gets a little heavy-handed with its constant, like, oh, well, global warming and stuff like this. Even though it's like, it's not how any of that really works, and nor is it that quick or anything. But oh well. So, here I was thinking, okay, I'm going to get a really stupid, but hopefully fun stupid film. Instead, I got a movie that really thought it was saying something kind of deep. Because, like, it begins going on about, oh, well, oh, my dad, he was doing this global warming. It's like, well, who are you, little girl that is talking to me? And turns out, this little girl that's narrating the film, <coughs> pardon me, it's Gerard Butler's daughter. Why this is important is never really explained. Like, she narrates to pretty much give exposition about why this array of satellites was created pretty much overnight. Because they're like, the storms were so terrible, we had to figure out a way to defeat them and bleep, 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 bleep. And that was where the movie already began to fail for me. Instead of dis explaining in some instance, how exactly this thing worked, or at least in terms of, hey, why this is here and how it actually saved some lives. Like, maybe there's like this massive hurricane brewing and it ends up like breaking it apart. That would be neat to see. Like, they kind of showed that in the trailers and I was like, okay, well, that would be, you know, interesting. Instead, you never get any of that. What instead you get is a bunch, and I just mean a bunch, of exposition for a long time on supposedly how this thing works, but it doesn't exactly work that way. Not only that, but it tries to batter you over the head with this fucking global warming shit that really after a while you're like, I don't think you even know what global warming is. Not only that, but it's like, and I'm just going to be the erger, you know, conservative person here by calling it constantly global warming. They're like, well, we call it a climate change. No, that's just, it's a fancy new title that was thrown on it because it turns out that it wasn't truly global warming in the actual sense and only that. But calling it that was painfully ignorant of what was truly happening because, oh my God, Al Gore's actually a dumbass. Sorry to ruin your your surprise, everybody. Al Gore's kind of stupid. On my soapbox <laughs> a little bit. 
but instead of getting that, or let's say we would get the, like it showed in the trailers, like, oh, well, here's like, you know, massive hail hitting the city, or anything like that, like, I would figure, oh, we're going to have, you know, massive, or like, you know, just suddenly tornadoes popping up in the middle of Russia. No, you don't get that. In fact, 90% of this movie takes place in space, and it's so boring because you got just generic cutouts of characters. Gerard Butler plays the hero character. This other guy who I know him from other things, I can't place his damn face. Who everything he does in this movie, he looks like he's trying to figure out if it's a poo or if it's a fart. It's, it's really awkward watching him. It's like, alright, Gerard Butler's hamming it up, but he's having fun with the role. This guy is generally incapable of acting. But then you have all these other characters who I can't even tell you their names. I couldn't tell you a single thing about them except for this is the German chick. Because she has a picture of the German flag on her chest. This is the Australian guy. He happens to be the bad guy. Because he's fucking British. In their eyes. Even though he's actually Australian. Then you have the obvious French guy who's trying to be like the bad guy. Then you also have this other thing. It, it tries to be a whodunit at one point, And I was just sitting there like, I... I don't care. I really don't give a shit. Like, it really wants to go into all this, well, who would have done this? Well, United States is technically in control. It's like, it's somebody in the government. I know what this fucking plot is. And it wants to make it like, this is such a, mm, mm, this is, this is hardcore, hard-hitting corruption stuff. Mm, yeah, nobody's ever seen this before. It's been done to death. At least in fucking day after tomorrow, it yeah, it was longer than it needed to be because like the entire thing with the wolves could have been completely cut out and nothing would have been lost from that film. Here, you could cut out the entire corruption thing and you could have just made it something as simple as just the entire machines kind of going haywire or maybe there's a corruption or corrupted bug or something like that. Anything... But instead, we go with the tried and true, there's an evil person, holy shit, it's Ed Helms, who would have fucking guess? When Ed Helms popped in my, he's the bad guy. He, he's the bad guy. I, I don't even need to hear him say a word, and I know he's the bad guy. And, yeah, it turns out he's the bad guy. After a while, I was like, he pulls out a gun and tries to shoot Gerard Butler's brother, who I don't, again, I can't remember the guy. But he's the guy who, everything in the trailer shows, well, he's doing this. He's doing the duck face for some weird reason. And really, oh, it's just, it's it's painful. I watched a movie called Geostorm because I wanted to watch, you know, random storm events happen, you know, and people trying to survive. I expected to see that. In all, that actually takes up maybe about five minutes of the entire film. Maybe ten if you really stretch it. And that's not good. You can't give me a movie called Geostorm and 90% of it's fucking corruption shit that we've seen in every other film done so much better. And on top of everything, it's not mostly in space where there's not actual storms as we think of them. Oh, God, it's, that's the problem with this movie. With Day After Tomorrow, it's like, yeah, eventually it settles on way too much of an ice motif. This does a similar fashion, like a lot of things like constant, oh, well, it's freezing stuff. It never really explains, like, the science of how it's able to affect the weather or how this ray of satellites are supposed to do this. It just, it does things, and it's just, it's all random, and you you quickly tune out of like, okay, well, I don't care about the fake science that they're not using to explain their fake science. So maybe the action's good. And that's another problem with this movie. There's too many times where the CGI, which should just be at least passable, is bad. Like, it's rather noticeably bad. Like, it's sci-fi television. Like, I, we spent $5 
to a guy who's fresh out of frickin' computer programming, and we're gonna ask him to do this. And it looks really bad. Like, there's one point where they have, like, these space shuttles, and they seem to lack, like, certain polygons in certain areas. Like, they're concaved in areas where they shouldn't be concaved, and it's weird. And it just, it's like, okay, that looks really, really fucking fake. Like, it already looked fake, but it looks worse. <laughs> and then there's sometimes where it looks decent. And it's where I'm confused, and it shows that this movie went through a very tumultuous, you know production. I mean, you can tell that there was originally an idea of just making this mostly just about the storm that was being caused, and the corruption stuff was going to be a backdrop at best. Instead, the corruption became the main story, so the storm became the backstory behind a fucking film called Geostorm. Holy shit. That would be like if Sharknado was mostly just about anything other than a shark tornado. I mean, it's like, wow, y'all missed the point of your own movie. And it feels mean to talk about the actors, because like I said, none of them really give a shit. Like, Andy Garcia is just there. Fucking Ed Helms is just doing what he's doing. He's phoning it in, but he's not terrible, but it's completely at best passable. Gerard Butler is at least decent with what he's given, but to be fair, Gerard Butler can usually make any piece of shit seem watchable. Like, even Gods of Egypt, which was a terrible flick, was at least watchable for Gerard Butler because as awful as he was doing, he was at least a wonderful piece of ham. He is like eating a shit sandwich. It happens to have a really well done piece of ham. It's, you know, just, it's got the perfect spices and everything. It's like, well, at least there's this taste to it. <laughs> but everybody else, it's all the same bullshit you have seen from Independence Day, Day After Tomorrow, fucking 2012. You name me a disaster movie that has come out in the past 20 years, this movie probably rips it off or pays homage to it in some way that's very lackadacious, to put it that word. Or lackadacial. I don't know the words right now. My brain is just stupid from this flick. And, like I said, I would, I wish I could say, well, there's, you know, this really cool scene with, oh, where, like, this blizzard comes through, but everything, it's all, like, instantaneous. Like, it's super, like, oh, grrr, super powerful stuff. And it's, like, the worst it could possibly be. It's like, well, why would anybody program things to make it just the absolute worst? Why not, you know... If they were really going to try to, oh, well, we're trying to control it, we're trying to use it as a weapon. I mean, hell, they could have just done it more subtle and eventually ramp up to it. Instead, like, it instantly jumps the gun to the biggest thing possible, which is where an entire village in Afghanistan freezes. And I don't just mean, like, oh, they get a bunch of snow. I mean, literally, they get to zero, or poor much point zero on Kelvin, like, the people freeze and they're all dead. Okay, what the fuck? That's like the most extreme possible, and they're like, well, we can't raise an alarm. Wait, what? This is not even a tiny village, like this little, it's a pretty decent Afghani village, and we're saying, oh, we can't raise an alarm, can't be, you know, too worried about this. What the fuck? And because of that, and like I said, th there's not a ramp up, and that's what this movie sorely needed. At least the day after tomorrow, there was a ramp up constantly, and it felt like it was constantly building up to the ice stuff. This, it, it just felt like, here, shit's hit the fan, and it's, it's like, okay, well, I feel like I tr got dropped in the middle of a film. And even then, I didn't get dropped into a good middle of a film. I feel like I got dropped into the bad end of a shitty flick. It needed much slower build. Like, if they just showed the Afghani village just, you know, oh, you know, it's high, you know, or they say, or it says, like, you know, uh, regular temperature this time of year, 
this temperature, like um, 95, and then just start snowing on them, it's not enough to make them think to say anything, because it would be weird, but they would be like, okay, but nobody's dead, nobody worries about it, you know, maybe just like some troops are even kind of like a little weird, I'm like, okay, well, okay, it's just a little cold, oh well, you know, kids are having fun in snowball fights. But then show in like Nepal, like let's say, like some of the ice near Mount Everest is starting to melt, or let's say like a guy's climbing in, he's like, so he's like, okay, I don't know why, jump, I'm hot, and he looks at his temperature and says it's 75 on top of Mount Everest. That would be a good ramp up. You're not murdering people right off the bat, but you're beginning to show something's up. And then you could go to Hong Kong, and let's say Hong Kong, instead of like this, what they do is they have where, oh, it superheats and it makes all these gas mains supposedly explode and all these buildings fall apart. Oh, not only that, but when people are driving and this shit's happening, every car turns hard left. Like, I noticed that really quickly, like after the this Hong Kong scene I'm about to describe, every car that this 3D modeler did always went left. Like, they didn't, ha and they would like pile and spin afterwards. They, every car did the exact same movement. I'm like, Wow, y'all are that cheap because you're using the same models and movements for every car. And there were times like you could see them clipping through each other. It was weird. And not even like, oh, well, they were hitting or anything. It's like, literally, it's just because they were set on a same similar course, but they didn't know how to create a rain into each other. Because pretty much it was a set area that they did, and one went into another area, and they crossed over. So it just like it looked like a car went right through another one. It was weird. But instead of doing that, they could have just had like tornadoes start kind of, or maybe like a tornado shows up. Because that's really weird for Hong Kong, you know. That's more of a midwestern thing, and not only that, but it's like an F four or something like that. You know, could kill some people. You know, it's a little, it's rather dangerous. I mean, it doesn't need to literally it is the guy who starts having sex and immediately blows his load and it doesn't even blow his load well just like Ugh. and because of that this movie sucks it's really not watchable you can't have a movie that starts off so bombast and it's not even good bombast and then you don't feel like you're getting a gradual increase of anything like that would have been something especially considering eventually there's at this what and miami like oh there's these lightning storms and it's just lightning everywhere and it's so dangerous wow you don't understand even how lightning works because if there is lightning rods it was still attracted even if there's a large amount of it but even then like at one point like it strikes the stadium and just makes it fucking explode and it like hits the outside of it it's like did the person who wrote this particular area do they think buildings are made out of explosives or something the fuck is going on right now so because of that like I said this movie is just bad it tries to be a corny disaster flick Similar to like Independence Day 2012, even I don't even like 2012. Uh, fucking Day After Tomorrow, all these are films. It tries to be them, but it has none of the heart, none of the actual care put into it. Instead, it was a guy saying, I want to do this. Well, they're like, Well, that doesn't make sense narratively. Why don't we try, you know, like I even point, I, I rewrote the first half of this flick. And it took me all five seconds of thinking. Just random thoughts from blue hair and somehow I was able to get it. And I've rewritten this film. I've made it immediately already a bit better. You can still have the bad acting. You can still have the stupid corruption thing if you really like it. I personally would go with just like a computer virus. Especially if you went with something like, oh, well, now it's actually more insane. Or maybe it's like a rogue AI or anything. Anything's British corruption bullshit I don't care about. Especially considering it's like it's too easy to not get caught. It's too easy to get caught. And it's too easy to fail. Huh. So, 
what do I give this? I will give Gerard Butler a two. And that's the only reason why this movie gets a two. Just because Gerard Butler, he's at least good with what he's being given. And he does make up a good chunk of the film. I was worried about that at first. Like, he wasn't going to be a main character. He really was the main character. But unfortunately, he's just given so little fucking nothing to do. So, by the end of it all, you're, you're going to be bored like I was. Like, I was bored of this flick quick. So... Since I've been to do it in Jigsaw, now I'm going to talk with y'all about what's going to be going on. Uh, just to let you know, uh, some things have kind of happened uh, personally, so Megan's probably not going to be showing up in reviews for a while, if at all. I will explain later whenever I get the chance. So, talk about November. Sorry to throw you off a little bit there if y'all are curious and you want to watch the popcorn, if, or you want to eat some popcorn to the you know, wonders of my life. <laughs> November, y'all know what's coming up next week. Thor. I, I don't even have to think. I don't think I have to say anything. It's like, yeah, I'm going to go see Thor. I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's one of those movies where I'm like, ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then right after that, it's probably going to be Murder on Orient Express. I know I was originally thinking about Days Home 2 because the first trailer so was like, okay, it's actually kind of cute and looks almost like I can laugh at it. And I saw the new shows that are starting to show on TV, and I'm like, okay, these are actually really painful. <laughs> it's actually kind of just that awkward human I don't like very much. So, uh, Daddy's Home 2 might happen, depending upon if I see Daddy's Home. Uh, I do know there's a John Cena cameo that I actually want to watch, because John Cena is always awesome in every cameo he does out of the fucking nowhere. And then, of course, y'all know it's the 17th. It's, it's going to be Justice League. Even though I'm still very... Uh, with Justice League, I'm going to go see it. Maybe it'll surprise me. Actually, the trailers haven't thrown me off too much, except for the fact they keep changing the lighting on it. Like, okay, blue or red? I don't fucking care which one y'all want to go with. Just choose one. Uh, probably after that will be Coco. Uh, I don't really give a shit about this, but it's, it's a film that comes out. <laughs> And that will pretty much end up the rest of the year, or end of the year. It'll end up the rest of the month. There's a few things that come out near the end of November, but I work for Amazon. We have really weird stuff, and that will be our busy time. So I'll be able to go eat Thanksgiving dinner, and then I'll have to probably go work later the next day. And, yeah, it's not going to be very fun for me. So, thankfully, I will have that reprieve. I will try and get something maybe for y'all. But we'll see how it all rolls out. But, yeah, uh, def definitely Justice League, Murder on Orient, Orient Express, and Thor. Of course, Thor, I'm really looking forward to. Justice League, I'm apprehensive, but I'm actually somewhat excited for Murder on Orient Express as a film that I know it comes out. <laughs> like, it's one that's like, eh, looks pretty, but give a shit. Eh, I'm not a big Agatha, Agatha Christie fan. So, yeah, that's Geostorm. Just fucking miss it. You're not gonna be sad if you missed it. And like I said, I only enjoyed Gerard Butler and Simple because he was such a big chunk of ham. Or now the movie can fuck itself. I don't care. So yeah, uh, next week, definitely Thor Ragnarok. Really looking forward to that. You'll have to put up with just me and my blue hair. <laughs> so until then, I'll see you all there. So bye-bye, everybody.